In ShareGate management, you have the ability to create three types of SharePoint sites, team site without 365 group, the team site with 365 group, or communication site. So all three are now available for you to create templates for end users to then create those different types of sites. Give your template a name for people to know why they'd be using it and give them a bit more details and to ensure they choose the right template for their needs. You will then simply choose whichever one fits your requirement. In a blueprint, the blueprint, just like you have in the Teams provisioning, is the ability for you to select an existing site in your environment, in your tenant, as the blueprint for this SharePoint site that's being created. You could use an existing site, any existing site. We recommend creating one that is going to be your template. So this way, all the team sites group connected for, let's say, marketing template will have all the requirements of a marketing team as part of it. So you go in your tenant, you create that team site. Let's take this one. And then I can decide to bring over just the structure of the site, which will bring the features, you know, the structure, the skeleton of your site or structure and content. So this way the sites can be pre-populated with some documentations or maybe some lists with tasks and columns and everything that's already preset so that people can start working when they get their site and not continue building their experience. What you can also do as the administrator creating your template is associated with your hub sites. In my production environment, I haven't set up hubs, but if I had any, I can just toggle this on and yep. the list would come up right here. And for your SharePoint sites, no matter which type of template you're creating, do you want the SharePoint site private or public? How many site owners are required? Just like how many team owners are required for the team's template? Do you want to enforce a naming convention with a prefix or a suffix? Maybe both. And if need be, you can also set an approval step on that template creation for your SharePoint sites. You will reference anyone in your environment that you would like to be the approver. So it doesn't need to be a ShareGate user. It doesn't need to be an IT administrator. It could be anyone in your organization that should be approver for these teams. I did earlier say, well, maybe it's a marketing template. Why not put the manager or the team lead of the marketing team as the approver? So they know exactly what kind of resources are generated by their department or team and have a better visibility over how they work and so on and so forth. And then once you're done, you create your template. It is now becoming available as one of your multiple templates that you might have created. And they are then visible for your end users to pick from the ShareGate end user application. Now in the ShareGate end user application, once you've created templates, we're going to be inviting you to install that ShareGate end user app for all of your end users. Then you have the full description of create a new workspace. And for the end users, they get prompted to choose between Teams, Team site, or communication site, and then we'll see whichever templates you made available to them. If I want to go and build a SharePoint Team site, here we go, I hit next. We'll see that template I just created, it's there. I could just use a template, and now I can create a, a new Team site as I wish. I can give it a description if needed, and now I can send for approval. And as I am the approver, we'll already see my approval request. I can actually click on it. James needs you to approve the team he just created. I can view my requests and see super simply approve or deny the request.